Hello. <clears throat> I often get asked when I write a book and um, when I go into a school about what the stages are of the book, like how do I write a book? Um, do I type it? Do I handwrite it? And I also get asked things about drafts, like um, editing and stuff like that. So I thought in a quick five minute video, I thought I'd try and explain the different stages I go through. So with Armistice Runner, this is a book about um, a girl who is a runner, a bell runner, um, and she finds out her great-great-granddad was a trench runner in the First World War, someone who passed messages on from one commander to another. When I had the idea for the book, I suppose I had the idea for the book um, on the hillside where my daughter was running, because she likes fell running, and that's where the idea started to come from. So I thought, right, I've got an idea for a book. So this is my notebook um, for lots of different books. I have notebooks, for instance, when I'm writing Roy the Rovers, I use this as my notebook. Um, so this is my notebook, and I go through in here, I have, I go through and I'll have, like, I'll have um, ideas about what I'd like to put in the story. Um, and I make lists of the sort of things that I need to find out. And then I go and find the things out that I need to find out. So I needed to find out about the history of fell running. And fell running is like running um, on the hills, in the, usually in the north of England, but also some places in the south. So I read books like these. These are books about fell running. And they're full of stories about runners through the years um, who've been involved in the sport of fell running. And that just gave me a few ideas about what I could put in my story. And so I then went through while I was writing it and made notes about all the things um, so that I'd remember them. So when I was actually writing the book, I'd have everything I needed in this notebook. I also read about the First World War. The story's um, set in the First World War, so you've got books like, this is a really good book about the First World War because it tells you things like um, about different weapons and it tells you definitions about medals and things like that. So you can get your facts right and not, not get it wrong. Um, I also read the story is set in the armistice, so that's the end of the First World War. So I read this book, which is um, kind of it's an oral history, which is is kind of it tells you um, from lots of different people's point of view and their experience at the end of the First World War, and that really helped me because my main character in here, um, Ernest Darby, he is a soldier at the end of the First World War, and using these voices, I was able to make my character. And hopefully more authentic. I also read other books like um, this is a book about the Lake District during the First World War because my story is set in the Lake District um, and this is a very um, rare book which is about someone who actually was a trench runner, someone who did the job that my character does in Armistice Runner. So I read all those things, I made lots of notes and then I made a plan. Um, my plans I've not got one here, but my plans sort of look like um, bubble diagrams like that, or um, or mind maps, you might call them. I make my plans, and then I start to write. And one of the things I do do um, is, I'd, once I've made a plan, I do all my writing on computer. So I, I write it up on this laptop, um, and it comes out like this. I write a first draft, then I go through it and check it and try and make it better. Um, and as you can see, I'll just I'll hold this up. I go through and I cross things out. Um, I add new things, I make notes about what I need to change um, just to make it as good as I could possibly make it by reading through um, and making sure I've got I've got it right and it's not I suppose it's not boring or um, or it doesn't make sense. Now once I've written that then a publisher likes it and they say they want to publish it the publisher then edits it with me, so they read through it and tell me lots more things where I could improve it, a bit like your teacher does. And then they do what's called typesetting it. So they turn it into this. This looks a lot more attractive and better designed than my, my script. Um, so they go through and they typeset it. And this, this, is, um, this is the, it's called a proof copy, the page proofs. Um, and I've just been through it and double checked that I'm happy with everything in it just gone through and this actually shows you what the pages will look like so it's got those illustrations on the bottom if you look in the book I'll just find the same page in the book and um, you'll see it's exactly the same as the book um, and that's once that's right and once they're happy with it the publisher will then print it um, and it'll be printed and made into books um, like these and probably about I don't know they are probably printed about 5,000 copies of this and um, thinking that in the first year or so they might sell 5,000 copies of the book. 
Um, they also, obviously, they have to write and um, get the blurb. So the, in my case, the editor did the blurb, but some publishers, there's someone who's got a job called a copywriter and they write the blurbs. They also write the words that go on posters. Um, and that's someone who's really good at like using a few amount of words to express something. Um, they also get a quote. In this case, um, a teacher called Scott Evans um, said something really nice about the book. So that quote goes at the top to make people more interested in the book. Um, and also the cover. Now the cover is really important, as you know. We do judge book by books by covers, um, and this one, this this one, this is a later version because originally this was the cover of Armistice Runner, um, and one and there's a couple of things about it that um, needed to be changed. I mean, it's an amazing cover, but the soldier in the original cover wasn't quite the right date, so he was more of a Second World War soldier. So they changed it. And made him into a first world war soldier but also one of the things that um i thought about was the the runner the girl who's the main character in the story lily um she 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 looks like when she's running there she looks like she's just sort of jogging along and and having a pleasant um run which is good but um in the stories about a girl who is quite a fast sort of strong runner um and there she is and that that shows us so if you compare that to that you actually see two very different, I should hold them up together, shouldn't I? Two very sort of different figures. And, and it's getting things like that right on the cover, as well as getting things right in the book um, and making it as good as you possibly can. So there are the stages. Um, after that, the author has to go out and do talks in schools, um, maybe write something for a newspaper or a magazine to try and make poor pe more people know um, about the book but that's kind of a rough guide to how a book comes about and um, I hope that was I hope that was interesting and there is another video in my video bit on the website about how I plan a book in more detail um, and I'll, there should be a link of that um, at the bottom on the page that you've watched this video on so if you want to find out more about planning then um, you could check that out but thank you very much anyway for listening and I hope that was um, useful